me from having to make everyone seasick here. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal on the planet. So busy folks like you don't have to. I think Apollo, the most interesting, most groundbreaking, the most practical findings into new videos and articles I upload nearly every day on my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence based nutrition. We're going to go for half an hour now, um, uh, my, uh, as I do every month with live Q and A's, but we got a bonus live uh, Q and A today later on at, let me see what time it is. Um, ah, at um, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So 9 p.m. Eastern time um, on Chef AJ's uh, Facebook um, and her YouTube channel. I will be joined by my colleague, Dr. Jen Hawk, and we are going to be taking your questions for a half an hour from uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time to 9.30, just in case I don't get to your question today. I see the questions pouring in. Let us um, jump through them. Courtney asks, are lectins really bad for you? Um, uh, and, uh, the, and so this, this question arises because there's a book called Plant Paradox by Dr. Steve Gundry. Um, and I did a whole series of videos, uh, about the book. The first video of which is Dr. Gundry is wrong. So it gives you a sense of direction I'm going, um, but talk about, uh, the pros and cons of lectins. Basically don't need to worry about your lectins. Some uh, lectins are harmful and destroyed by, uh, proper cooking. Others are harmless and others may actually be beneficial. All right. Um, next question is Nicole Al Alisa. Uh, how much protein is too little? Less than 0.8 grams per healthy kilogram body weight a day. Um, now, of course, the estimated average requirement is more like 0.6, um, but that gets like half the bell curve. You want to get more than half the bell curve. So 0.8 grams per healthy kilogram body weight, I would try to hit that. Okay. Um, a dream merchant says, do I still recommend only using USP verified supplements? Um, um, so USP is a, um, uh, a third-party certification um, company um, that supplement companies can pay to do kind of independent um, random checks to make sure, and this is their sole job, to make sure what's on the label is what's actually in the supplement. The same dose, the same ingredients, nothing new else is added that isn't supposed to be there. Um, so it's no guarantee the supplement's actually good for you. It could be horrible. It could be like, yep, this supplement has just as much strychnine as you say on the label. Uh, but at least, you know, you're getting, you know, if you're paying money for X, you want X in the bottle. And uh, because the supplement industry is so poorly regulated, um, it's um, that, that uh, you never really know what's in the bottle. And I have these crazy videos talking about how not on some dark corner of the internet, but like mainstream, like Walgreens and GNC and all these places where a lot of people buy supplements, you just random bottles off the shelf. So it's such crazy stuff in there, sometimes adulterated with uh, illegal drugs and oh my God, on and on. It's kind of the wild west out there, which is just the way the supplement industry wants it. In fact, much of, much of the supplements these days are actually created by the pharmaceutical industry um, and uh, they are not known for being particularly rigorous about quality control. Okay. Um, okay. Next on the list. Um, uh, this is the light messenger. Can you OD on, can you overdose on nitric oxide boosting foods? So we're talking about dark green leafy vegetables predominantly. Um, so basically dark green leafies and beets and beetroot. Um, and uh, beet greens. And number one, I think is arugula in terms of uh, nitrate containing compounds. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, no, you cannot eat too much arugula. Um, uh, I encourage people to eat, um, uh, cups of dark green leafy vegetables a day. Um, the only uh, caveat would be if you're eating high oxalate vegetables, um, such as beet greens, Swiss chard, and, uh, spinach, I would not eat cups a day. I would diversify your greens, uh, just because we don't want to increase your risk of kidney stones. All right. I am going to, uh, scroll all the way back up the top because it looks like I missed a few. 
Um, uh, uh, Nana raises her hand up. You got to ask a question, though. The Giroudi family is is all hearts. That's wonderful. Aaron Johnson asks, my thoughts on the Bible's dietary guidelines um, are animal products in themselves bad for humans. Why doesn't your app have omega and vitamin D supplements? Whoa, okay. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, um, uh, well, I, uh, I'm a big fan of the Garden of Eden. Um, where, um, uh, where, uh, which instructs to um, eat all sorts of, uh, of plant foods. Um, and that's really where we should center our diets around. And only after the flood do we, uh, do we start uh, going, going beyond that. But there's actually um, the first randomized controlled trial was performed in the Bible. Daniel, remember the book of Daniel? Anyway, I got a video um, on uh, the... Uh, uh, the Daniel diet. Um, uh, and, and no, so check out the videos. Um, and it turns out, uh, if you eat plants, good things happen. Okay. Where are we? Okay. Um, the light messenger says, can you get high blood pressure if you eat a high carb and fruit diet since cur- carbs turn into sugars in the body? Um, high blood sugars come from, uh, insulin resistance, meaning your body. Well, I mean, uh, predominantly, um, you could also not be making insulin, have type one diabetes, but um, uh, high blood pressures um, tend to come from insulin resistance, which is caused by fat lodged in your muscles and your liver and your pancreas. But we can, uh, and that comes from two places, fat on your body. Um, so you may have to lose weight to decrease uh, insulin resistance, bring down your blood sugars or fat going in your mouth. So you may have to start eating saturated fat laden foods like meat, eggs, dairy, and junk. Meat, eggs, dairy, and junk. Um, and that's the way to do it. Um, eating, um, and I have a bunch of videos showing what happens when you put people on extremely high carb diets and what happens to their blood sugars. Um, and they go down because you're at the same time reducing fat intake. Oh, it, um, unfortunately, there are so many questions. Scroll up too high. I actually can't get to the top of my feed. Um, so I'll just have to uh, uh, um, grab them in the middle. Uh, Keen Southard says, where's the treadmill? Good question. Um, uh, it is um, uh, my question. My treadmill, as you can see a different background. I am no longer in Philadelphia um, and my treadmill is taking it. Sweet old time getting here. Katie says, hello. Hello, Katie. Um, Little Voice says, can diet heal and stop a decline in emphysema? What foods do you recommend? You know, normally you'd say no. I mean, so COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like emphysema, are scarring diseases. And we didn't think there was any kind of reversibility until they randomized people to add a few servings of fruits and vegetables to their diet and saw a significant improvement in lung function. That's not supposed to happen. I mean, maybe we could slow it down or something. I actually saw an improvement in lung function, whether it's the anti-inflammatory nature of fruits and vegetables or the antioxidant fruit nature of fruits and vegetables. Who knows? Who cares? Eat your fruits and veggies. These are anti-inflammatory foods. It also helps with asthma, other uh, lung issues. Check out my videos on all of the above. All right, I am just clicking at random now because it's like a it's like a scroll. Uh, what, are, what are those things with the wheels and the Vegas and the, that's what it looks like. So I just click on one and it says, "What is the best diet to heal an undernourished body?" Uh, a, dotty, a, a diet filled with nourishment. Um, uh, and, uh, that would be a diet centered around whole plant foods. That'd be the healthiest in terms of most nutrition per calorie. Okay. Random click thoughts on bioavailability between L-arginine and arginine malate. Uh, so arginine is a an amino acid found predominantly in plant foods. Guess where you get them? Plant foods. You don't take supplements of arginine. Okay, what did I eat today? Here, should we show some? Can I can I show my? This does not look very appetizing, but this is a sweet potato. Very sad, pale sweet potato. I know they're actually. I just had some purple sweet potatoes, but I was robbed. They looked purple sweet potatoes, like the Okinawan sweet potatoes. On the inside, white, pale yellow. So anyway, I'm still eating it, but not happy about it. Gonna go back in my purple ones. Anyway, all right. That's what I'm eating for breakfast. Okay, with some chai tea. Hold on. Okay, where are we? I also had an apple this morning. Um. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, 
random click. Does pickle, pickled, who eats pickled mustard seeds? Work as an enzyme. Oh, oh, okay. So, oh, kind of a high, uh, high level question. Um, so mustard seeds, um, what do they grow into? Mustard greens. What are mustard greens? These are cruciferous vegetables. They actually contain the uh, enzyme um, that uh, that uh, the, that that turns glucosinolates into sulforaphane, which is the kind of active ingredient we want. But if you're not eating um, raw cruciferous vegetables, the enzyme itself is actually destroyed by cooking. But the um, the starting product and the end product are heat stable. So you just need to add some enzyme to your cooked greens and you're all set. You can use the hack and hold technique or a little mustard powder. And the question was, um, what if you pickle your mustard seeds? I've never heard of such a thing. Would that destroy the enzyme? I have no idea. That's not a, that, that, I've, I've never seen such a thing. Okay. Uh, is a little salt bad for you when you eat whole food plant-based? Depends on what you think of a little salt. I encourage people to stick. Um, if by a little salt, you mean under 1500 milligrams of sodium a day. No problem, but I would um, hit that American Heart Association recommended guideline. All right, um, click. Gar oh, there's Garden of Eden. Someone's just quoting some Bible at us. Um, uh, oh, Katrina says, when is the SIBO series going to come along? Oh, my God, it'd be kind of fun. You know, I hate to, one of these Q&As, I should just read the transcripts of the SIBO series. I get that um, uh, question kind of often. In fact, when I'm randomly clicking through questions today, as I scroll up, if I get another SIBO question, I will literally do a spoiler alert, go straight to the SIBO series. I don't know when they're coming up on the site. It's funny. They may come up like, you know, Monday, and then I just, but not much of a spoiler. But what if it's like a month away? We will go through SIBO if I hit this again. All right? Let's try. Ta-da! Uh, Dan Perlman says, I want to make my own gels. Oh, okay, for running long distance. Well, using date syrup give me the same benefits as the Khmer. God darn it. So I don't know. I, um, unfortunately, uh, the, the I guess you have to ask short questions. I assume same benefits as commercial gels, maybe? Um, uh, well, uh, presumably what you're looking for in gels is just a, a quick source of uh, carbohydrates in which date syrup would totally get you there. Sounds awful sticky, though. Um, on You could just run with a banana or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, if uh, that wasn't actually your question, uh, if you want to ask it again, maybe I will click on it randomly. Here we go. Random click. Can I combine? I don't even know what cert food is. Cert food diet. Sorry. Uh, ask the question again. And I apologize if it's like, duh, don't you know what cert food is? Um, the uh, Lily, uh, Liliana Cervantes says the eczema can be, can I, can eczema be cured? Um, I check out uh, my videos on eczema. Um, I have videos on both dietary things, so ways you could help eczema. Eczema is a skin condition. Um, dietary ways to help your uh, skin from the inside out, as well as topical treatments that you can apply to skin, eczema areas, to help, and different ones have been put to the test, so definitely check those out. Okay, and... Uh, Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think I got a, I apologize to whoever I just clicked on. I didn't think the click hit. And so then we just lost the question. All right, ask it again. What are my thoughts on protein powder supplements? Um, oh, all sorts of stuff. Brass, who eats brass? Um, um, so we should try to get all of our nutrition whenever possible from whole plant foods. And so where are we going to get our fat? We're going to get our fat from whole plant foods, nuts, seeds, avocados, right? Where are we going to get our carbohydrates? From whole plant foods, sweet potatoes and apples. and Okay, where are we going to get our protein? Um, so, right, so the fat we don't want from oil. That's the, the, the extracted part. For carbohydrates, you don't want to get it from added sugars, right? The table sugar, high fructose corn syrup. And similarly, with protein, we want to get it from whole plant foods. We don't want to get it from protein powders. Protein powders are the, are the protein equivalent of table sugar. Right, every all the nutrition has been removed away. You're just left with the straight protein, um, or the nutritional equivalent of you know uh, of oil in the fat kingdom. And so, what are good sources of protein? Well, legumes are the protein superstars. Um, anyone who doesn't know how to get protein on a plant based diet doesn't know beans. Uh, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. Eat some hummus. Um, I mean, you don't have to, I mean, but there's just, that's the, there's also lots of protein and whole grains, etc. Okay. Let's click and find out where we get. 
Um, uh, Nayarb Zaid says, um, any studies on seedless, uh, seedless fruits and veggies versus seeded ones? Um, uh, so uh, seeded fruits and veggies are fruits, right? That's where the seeds are found. So it's basic, and vegetables are basically all parts of the plant that aren't fruits. So even vegetables, that, so fruits, uh, so vegetables you think, fruits that you think are vegetables are actually fruits, like tomatoes. That's actually a fruit. It's got seeds. What, do you, what part of the plant do you think a tomato is? It's the fruit. Anyway, um, so, uh, so basically this questioner, even though they don't know it, they're asking, um, uh, which is better, fruits or vegetables? Um, and actually, if you look at the Global Burden of Disease Study, what do you think um, uh, the human diet is more deficient in, in terms of reducing morbidity and mortality? <gasps> fruits, actually. So number two. I, well, no, maybe number three after whole grains. I think it goes too much sodium, then inadequate whole grain intake, inadequate fruit intake, then inadequate nut and seed intake, then I think inadequate vegetable intake. I think those are the top five worst things about the um, human diet. Uh, but what's the healthiest food? Having said that, what's the healthiest food on the planet Earth? Dark green leafy vegetables, which is um, vegetables, obviously. Okay, we are, oh, sorry, I did it again with the double click. D. Payne says, help, make three supplements are seriously expensive. What do you suggest for a family, a big family? Um, well, you could get very concentrated. Um, uh, um, so some uh, long, uh, long chain make threes like DHA, EPA supplements are more than you need. So they're like 600 milligrams. You only need 250. And so you could just split it up um, between folks, put it in a smoothie or something. All right. Uh, Margarita Salty says, is there any downside to stool softeners? Uh, for someone who's constipated, even though they're um, eating whole food plant-based, I would go see your physician. You should not be constipated whole food plant-based unless you're not drinking water or something. So I would find out. I would go to a gastroenterologist and see what's going on before starting taking drugs because we always want to treat the cause whenever possible. All right. Why is my serum B12 levels three times the recommended upper limit? There is no recommended upper limit. That's just the normal distribution. And so you're three times normal distribution. That's because you're probably doing the right thing by taking B12 supplements or eating fortified foods if you're eating a healthy diet. So wait a second. Might that be harmful? I've got videos on that coming up. I don't think they're up next. But I did a webinar on it, and so it's available. Um, uh, you can download the whole webinar. It goes for a couple hours, but I talk about um, how it's not harmful to have elevated levels of B12 in your blood. Um, that Spoiler alert. Okay. Oh, margarita's back. Oh, we already did margarita. Let's try it again. Anita Amit says, you mentioned the sodium miso is okay um, to, to, to the effects of the soy, but all miso I find seems to have salt. Right. No, no. Miso is extremely salty. Um, so, but to everyone's surprise, despite its extreme salt content, it was not associated with high blood pressure, miso consumption, even like two bowls a day of miso soup, not associated with the two, uh, two of the main things we care about when it comes to sodium, stomach cancer and high blood pressure. And so miso seems to be exception. That's why in my How Not to Die cookbook, that's what I used to make things salty, miso, because it does not seem to have the downsides. And we think it's because the soy, the counterbalancing effects of soy, got videos about that. And guess what? I have a new cookbook coming out this December, the How Not to Diet Companion Cookbook. I'm really excited about it. We have this December. Get it for everybody on your Christmas list or your holiday list. Uh, check it out. All right. Do I have any studies, asked Jody, on food and nerve issues? That's kind of a broad topic, but certainly lots of studies on brain health, cognitive health, multiple sclerosis, um, peripheral neuropathy. So yes, the answer is yes. Go to nutritionfacts.org and go crazy with the search bar. We have about 2,000 videos now with videos continued to be churned out all the time. And uh, that's one of my favorite things about these Q&As is because I give people sneak peeks. Still haven't hit our second SIBO question, in which case I jump right into those. Let's see. Okay, Satoshi Chomsky Satoshi Chomsky says, why have I become oat intolerant? Not gluten sensitive, but sometimes there's gluten contamination of oats. Um, so I would have to find out what do you mean by intolerance? I mean, do you, does your tongue swell up? Do you get a rash? I mean, whoa, do you just not feel good? 
uh, give me a few more details because actually an oat allergy is very, would be uh, unlikely, but though not unheard of. You basically become allergic to almost everything except sweet potatoes, tapioca, and water. Okay, would I comment on maltodextrin? Don't worry about maltodextrin. That's my comment. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to eat it by the bucketful, but uh, it's not going to be harmful. It's basically just filler. Um, DeRosi says, tingling in hands and feet 24 so oh, for three years. All causes have been ruled out. Obviously not, because there's something causing it. Feet are worse, and uh, I don't see the rest of the question. Um, so uh, pr- uh, that's, uh, that's uh, peripheral neuropathy. Um, feet are uh, typically worse because those are longer nerves. Um, and so you need to um, see a neurologist. Sounds like you've already seen a neurologist. Well, guess what? You gotta see another neurologist. You gotta keep going. Um, and so there's all sorts of rare things like uh, heavy metal toxicities and something. If you're taking like an Ayurvedic supplement, maybe contaminated with lead or mercury, that may be causing it. Um, uh, it sounds like you got some of the main things ruled out, but uh, something's causing it. And you gotta get to the bottom of it. And so that's a second, um, uh, you know, uh, second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion. Um, and you know, you can do some research yourself and Google um, differential diagnosis peripheral neuropathy. That'll give you all the various things that cause it. You go down the list. Oh, yeah, the doctor checked for that, checked for that. Oh, but didn't check for that. So maybe I should get checked for that. Um, I have the, an amazing video uh, on an actress. Remember this? The, it was a lead video, right? An actress who was taking like calcium supplements, but the calcium was bone meal and it was filled with lead and she was like basically paralyzed, um, a just absolutely horrible uh, condition. But she did her own research, found out that heavy metal toxicity can cause her problems and then they got her, the bone meal tested and oh my God, she's been scooping lead all day thanks to a doctor that said it would help her. So anyway, it was making things worse. That's the kind of thing you may have to do your own kind of citizen journalism to find out and ask your doctor, wait a second, did you check for this? Because I see that this is a potential, you know, cause of purple neuropathy. Um, you don't want it to get worse, obviously. Okay. Um, Becky Miller um, Boucher. I don't know how to pronounce names. I apologize. I should probably not even. It's on the screen. Why am I even uh, pronouncing names and making myself look silly? Anyway, if trying, why well, you want to give them plugs? Like, thank you, Becky, for asking the question. But anyway, if trying to reduce cholesterol, should I give up nuts? And the answer is no. If you eat nuts, your cholesterol goes down. In fact, by not eating nuts, um, your cholesterol is not getting down as low as it potentially could go. Hottie says, is mineral water a good source of calcium? Actually, surprisingly, um, some mineral waters actually do have a substantial amount of calcium. Uh, but, uh, but mineral water doesn't mean there's mineral water with zero calcium. Um, it depends on the source. Um, uh, but, um, but if you happen to find one with calcium, you can, that's a source of calcium. Okay, Bizdez, Bixdez says, do I know anything about depersonalization? Um, uh, um, I assume they're talking about the psychiatric symptom. Um, uh, um, I, uh, it's not something I've looked into in terms of dietary interventions. Um, and, and that is, uh, can be part of a number of clinical syndromes. So you'd want to find out what the syndrome is and then see if there's any cause you can treat. Okay. Space time asks, do I recommend Getting oh, I should move this over here so I'm actually talking to people. Do I recommend getting supplements of omega three algae to get e, uh, DHA and EPA? I have a series of videos where I conclude that I would consider taking two hundred fifty milligrams of preformed DHA from a pollutant free source, which is an algae or yeast based source. Something that I do, something I recommend doing. But you could watch that those same video series and be like, eh, I don't think the evidence is there, um, uh, and uh, and choose not to do it, but. Uh, Either do it or um, or check out the the, the 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 video series and make up your own mind. Okay. Um, uh, oh, I am so not pronouncing that name. How do I prepare for a successful what? What is a VBA two C? Please define. Well, I guess I could Google it. All right, we gotta Google this VBA VBA. What is it? V VBA two C five things we should know. Oh, vaginal birth after second cesarean. Oh, after two or more cesareans. I totally didn't know that. You can see I'm not an obstetrician. Um, how do I prepare? Uh, you eat healthfully, and of course, particularly important to eat 
um, healthfully uh, when you're pregnant, because of course you are uh, need to create all the new organ systems from scratch. Um, there's some wonderful books out there. Reed Mengels has uh, has a uh, has a book on plant based pregnancies. Um, so and when I think uh, to yeah, that's a good one. Um, uh, and but that would be independent of how that child is coming out into the world. Okay, um, looks like someone's just replying to somebody else. Um, does eating chestnuts every day healthy? Um, so chestnuts actually don't have the benefits that you'd get from regular kind of tree nuts or peanuts for that matter. Um, uh, not harmful, um, but uh, just not particularly nutritious foods. Um, and so when I talk about the benefits of eating nuts, I'm talking about all nuts with the exception of chestnuts and coconuts. Okay. Oh, oh, great question. Is Moringa leaf healthy? I have my own Moringa tree. Oh, I wonder where you live. That's cool. Um, uh, I have video. Come, in fact, I put out on social media, just a little FYI, a video coming up about Moringa and another, uh, what's the other, what's the tropical fruit? Uh, uh, there's two. So I'm telling people don't eat Moringa. I encourage you not to eat Moringa. And then there's a the tropical food I was encouraging people not to eat. Now I forget which which one it was. Um, you just have to go back, look through my Facebook feed. Anyway, video is coming up to uh, explain why you shouldn't. Um, uh, but in the meanwhile, trust me and uh, make up your own mind once the video is up. Okay, Remco asks, is there any science on food and improvement on mental illness? Yes. In fact, that is going to be not my next book, but and my, not my next book after that, but my book after that. So that would be uh, in 2031, my book will be on uh, uh, talking about uh, um, uh, uh, the role of diet in preventing and reversing, reversing uh, mental illness. But I do have a lot of videos on the site about depression, about uh, generalized anxiety disorder, if you want schizophrenia. So yeah, um, uh, definitely check it out. Just uh, type it in nutritionfacts.org and they will pop right up. Okay, Edu Sattva says, whether a whole food plant-based diet, ooh, can stop or even reverse osteoarthritis. Um, it doesn't even have to be that healthy. Um, uh, uh, but yes, indeed, eating healthy can uh, um, uh, um, can help with osteoarthritis in terms of reversal, um, uh, maybe reverse the progression. Um, but uh, these were short-term studies, um, so I don't I don't think there was a study where someone was like, I no longer have knee pain, but um, uh, def things definitely got better on a healthy diet. And so one presume if it can, keeps getting better, maybe we could actually eventually get reversal. But um, just type in osteoarthritis. I've got a bunch of videos on that. See, we used to think it was kind of wear and tear mechanical um, disease um, because, you know, people who are really heavy tend to get osteoarthritis in the knees, but they also get it in the fingers and things that aren't weight bearing. Um, and so uh, it, it actually has an inflammatory component. So no wonder an anti-inflammatory diet, meaning a plant-based diet, those are synonymous terms, anti-inflammatory diet, uh, plant-based diet, whole food plant-based diet, no wonder it would help with inflammatory joint diseases like osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. There's even, I have a video coming up on ankylosing spondylitis, um, which is kind of a the osteoarthritis, of the spine, not an osteoarthritis, an inflammatory arthritis of the spine. Check out, but unfortunately we are running out of time here, uh, but I encourage everyone to please subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can just click the little bell thing, follow us on on Twitter, nutrition underscore facts. Find us on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash nutritionfacts.org. Um, and then we have a free email newsletter that goes out about once or twice a month with all the cool Q&As and new swag and new videos and webinars. We just did a, a two-hour webinar yesterday. Went well. Didn't go well technically, but I think went well content-wise. Um, and finally, follow us on Instagram at nutrition underscore facts underscore or thank you so much, everybody. And remember, I have another Q&A today live with my colleague, Dr. Jen Hawk, at um, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time with Chef AJ. Should you go to Chef AJ's Facebook page or Chef AJ's YouTube channel? Um, I think they're both streamed live from both. Um, and I will see you tonight.